Blog Talk Radio. All right, you're listening live to ATL Prime Sports. I'm Todd Quarter from Atlanta. Mark Mancini's in Los Angeles. And our producer, Wayne, is in Memphis, who's one of the best in the business. Uh, you don't get better than him. Uh, JJ's out this week. He'll be back on, on Monday. Guys, it's our Super Bowl edition. We're finally here. The game is less than 48 hours away. Tom Brady doesn't have COVID at the moment. Uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes doesn't have COVID at the moment. Only potentially a couple of reserve players from the Chiefs. They're testing daily, and if they test negative today, tomorrow, and Sunday, five days all together, they will be able to play. If I'm Brady and I'm Mahomes, I do not go to the barber. There was the story about, uh, uh, before I introduce you guys, about the uh, Kansas City Chiefs barber testing positive for COVID-19, and 20 players were scheduled to get a haircut, and one of those players was Patrick Mahomes. Thank God it didn't happen, because if it did, it would have ruined the Super Bowl, and the NFL already made the statement, we're going to play no matter what, which has been their mantra since day one. Once again, I'm Todd Quarter. Uh, you can get a hold of me at ATL Prime Sports. All of us, actually. You can get a hold of myself at Quarter Todd. And without further ado, uh, Mark, how are you today? And tell the audience how they can get a hold of you. And hopefully you well, can get a hold of me at Mancini Sports at Yahoo.com. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm doing great today. And, uh, by the way, I thought, you know, Patrick Mahomes – uh, does he get haircuts like every week? Because every time I turn on a State Farm commercial, it seems like he's in the barber chair. So I don't know what's going on in Kansas City because I finally got my hair lined up after 11 months looking like Nick Nolte out here in Hollywood. <laughs> you know what? You know what? He, I, I, he doesn't cut his little mustache. They call that a cat stash and his little uh, fur on his chin. But maybe he does cut his hair frequently. Uh, Wayne out in Memphis. Our producer is one of the best in the business. I can't emphasize it enough. How are you today, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you can catch me at uh, RWY Junior on Twitter. And uh, I got my hair cut um, last week, uh, number four blade all around and then blocked the back. No, okay. Did you get it done by your wife or was this, say, professional that did it? Professional. Uh, I'm sorry, not that it's saying your wife's not a professional. I need to be trouble for I I need to, I need to stop that before I get in trouble with her. But uh, yeah, you got it done by a professional. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I haven't got mine done by a professional. My wife is going to do mine when she gets into town tomorrow. She is a professional. Oops, I made that mistake again. But uh, I am not going to the barber anytime soon to get my hair cut. And I recommend highly that the football players do not do it. Do not do this soon. We have less than what slow over 48 hours from the game. Let's pray that everybody stays off the Rona. All right, guys. I tell you what. There's a lot of stories uh, for this game. There's a lot of records, as you know. Um, you know, we should talk about uh, the little things that add up to the big things in this game. But let's start off with the big things. This is Mahomes versus Brady, round five. You know, the, the NFL kind of drew the season up better at the end. You've got Tom Brady, who's – this will be his 10th Super Bowl. He's going for his seventh win, uh, which is more – if he gets it, it'll be more than any other franchise in the NFL. Then you flip the script with Patrick Mahomes, who is the best quarterback currently in the NFL right now. Uh, going for his second Super Bowl in a row, and teams haven't repeated since the early 2000s. Nobody has repeated in the NFL. This would be a tremendous feat for the Chiefs. And, Mark, let's talk about these two quarterbacks, Brady and Mahomes. They're special. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I, I might like the fuse in Kansas City. I, I've never been a Patrick Mahomes guy. I saw him rip up the Rams on that Monday night game, which was extraordinary. Everybody has a little 15 minutes of fame in them. Uh, I'm not saying he doesn't have much more than that, but let's let's be honest here. This guy, you know, took advantage of the AFC. Uh, you know, he was ahead of the curve on, you know, teams like Buffalo and Cleveland and Baltimore and Pittsburgh was banged up. 
the division was a joke, you know, uh, you know the Chargers and Broncos and, and Raiders were trying to form one team. So, you know, when I look at Kansas City now, I, I, I don't I don't think much of them. I think they're going to get blown out in this game. And, and then I won't hear have to hear Kansas City and barbecue food for quite a while because then you're going to have a lot of young gunslingers coming up in the AFC, uh, including Trevor Lawrence. But as far as special, the, the only special thing here is they're all chasing Brady. When you look at Mahomes, when you looked at Rodgers, when you looked at Manning, yeah, you can win individual uh, awards and all that, but this guy knows what's at stake. He's going to get number seven come Sunday, and uh, then we're going to try to figure out when he's going to get number eight. You ruined the predictions. We were supposed to do that at the end, but you know what? You got it out of the way early for you. Wayne and I will save ours for later. That's okay. At least you come out with with your take. Um, Wayne, this Mahomes guy and this Brady, this matchup, this is round five. It's something special. Uh, They split to a piece so far. And and you know what? If, if, If Kansas City does win, this is totally the change of the guard, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. It's, um, it, uh, Mahomes is definitely the up-and-comer if you're going to put uh, him up against Brady. Uh, anybody you put up a Brady would be an up-and-comer. But, um, you know, seven is the magic number. Um, there's been seven championships three times in NASCAR. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Sr., and Richard Petty, and no one's ever gone beyond seven. So maybe this seven Super Bowl is going to be the magic number for uh, Tom Brady. We'll see. Well, speaking of that magic number, I like the NASCAR analogy. It's you know they say it's more of an individual um, uh, sport um, and, than it is football. But you know in NASCAR you've got the pit crew, you've got you, you know there's a lot involved besides the skillful driver. So I I do like that analogy. Uh, there's no question about it, but, um, you know, if, if Kansas City wins, Mahomes would be at his second Super Bowl, Brady would be at six, and but if Brady wins, he's at seven, Mahomes is at one, nobody thinks that Mahomes could catch him, where if Mahomes wins here, maybe down the line he could catch him. To me, catching him either way is a long shot. Not only do you have to stay healthy, but you've got to be on a great team for a long time, and the way the salary cap um, is in the National Football League, it may be hard to do, but I tell you, man, this Patrick Mahomes to me is, I mean, 38 touchdowns, what, six interceptions. I mean, look at his career coming out of Texas Tech. Uh, You know, he sat and waited a little bit, and, I mean, he's played, what, three full seasons now. And he's thrown 114 touchdowns, uh, hits 24 interceptions. His quarterback rating, and I'm not a big rating guy, but I'll say it anyway, 108.7. Um, I, 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 I haven't seen anything like this, throwing no-look passes and, and et cetera. And then you've got Tom Brady to flip the script. An old-school quarterback, play-action pass, um, Will, loves to throw it deep now that he has the weapons in Tampa, but it was, a, you know, more of a dink and dunk offense in the latter part of Brady's career in New England, where when he had Randy Moss, it was to chuck it deep. So, um, you know, now that Brady does have more weapons in, 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 in Tampa, he's going to that. But, you know, you know, Brady does rely on that running game like any great quarterback, and it seems to me that whoever has the, you know, the better running game, is going to help their play, but you know, you know, only a couple guys have passed Brady in championships in sports history, and you know, you can count them on one hand. What Bill Russell, Yogi Berra? I mean, we're talking really special records and special people, and Brady can get it. Uh, Mark, I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to you now. Tampa is at home. This is a home game for them. They get to practice at home. They get to sleep in their own bed at night. They get to go through. Nothing's changed for them. You don't have the Super Bowl hoopla. This is like another regular season to them preparation-wise. In Kansas City, it is too. They're at home this week. They're practicing in their facility. They had to practice indoors because of the snow um, uh, yesterday. 
and they may well today, but also, um, you know, they, they're going to come to Tampa on Saturday. So they're going to miss the hoopla too. So this is like a regular season road game for them or a regular season playoff game. I just find this fascinating, don't you? Well, you still got to travel. So whether you're traveling in the beginning of the week, the middle of the week, or, you know, the last day, you're still traveling. You're still getting in an airport. You're still flying. And uh, that's the way I look at it. So it's going to take some time out of you. And you're going into a different time zone. Whereas Tampa just wakes up, practices, maybe has a walkthrough. Uh, you know, when you look at Tampa Bay, to me they got ice in the veins. You know, nothing's going to rattle these guys. They know what's at stake. they got a great running game. Kansas City hasn't faced a running game in the playoffs like this. They'll face one come Sunday. you got an array of wide receivers. you got a great tight end. On the other side of the ball, what am I supposed to be afraid of? Uh, Kelsey, if I neutralize him, if I deceive – you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes here, I can throw different, you know, defenses, 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, confuse this guy, blitz him, you know, with Pierre Paul. I, I, you know, I, I don't know what all the hype is. And when I look like getting back to the Mahomes deal, everybody was on the hype train when uh, Peyton Manning was in the league saying, yeah, this guy threw for this many yards, that many yards, all this. What division was this guy in? I mean, you know, I looked at, you know, Peyton Manning and Mahomes like I looked at Dan Fouts, except, you know, Dan Fouts didn't win a Super Bowl, but he threw for 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 yards. I'm not in, 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 enthralled with that. I need to see wins. When I look at guys, driven dudes, you know, you look at Michael Jordan, you look at the Kobe Bryant, you look at the LeBron James, you look at Tom Brady, you look at Bradshaw, that's won consecutive MVPs in the Super Bowl. This is what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at guys that are, you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes of fame that everybody gets on the bus for. <laughs> well, um, you know, speaking of fame, uh, Wayne, I forgot to add um, Michael Jordan in there. You know, Brady will pass him with his seventh championship if he wins. Jordan has six. But, you know, Wayne, think about this. If you're 30 years old and you have seen one quarterback in a third uh, uh, of the third of the Super Bowls in your lifetime, that's just mind-boggling. That is absolutely mind-boggling. And J.J., who's on vacation, uh, hanging around with his baby Jordan uh, right now, uh, sent me that statistic, and I appreciate him for that. Isn't that mind-boggling? Yeah, it's uh, it's something to to think about, if anything. And uh, you know, like uh, Mark was saying, you know, you got some people that uh, are just mainstayers; they're there all the time. And then you got other guys that are flash in the pan. And uh, hopefully, Mahomes won't be a flash in the pan. But uh, I just, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with this game here. Well, it's just you know, it's just special. I mean, it really is. Despite the, you know, the, the NFL going through the COVID protocols and everything, this stuff is special. And, and when you look at this game and you look at the tail of the tape, the Buccaneers lead the series all-time 7-4. That, this means nothing. Of course, you know the last matchup, Kansas City had a big lead, and they held on to win it 27-24 in Tampa. As you know, this is the first Super Bowl appearance for the Bucs since 02-03 when John Gruden coached him, and they defeated the Raiders 48-21 with Brad Johnson. Also, the Chiefs are looking to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls, which we mentioned earlier. No team had done it since actually the 03-04 Patriots. And then also, the Bucks are the first team to play a Super Bowl in their home stadium, which we mentioned. So, you know, all that stuff, uh, it is, is kind of sets it up a little bit. We've talked about the home field. Mark, just give me one key, and we'll go around the uh, horn here, and we'll start giving keys to this game. What's one key of yours? Well, I think the key on. is uh, they're going to have to control the, uh, the, t the Tampa Bay offense from Kansas City's defense uh, uh perspective i think that's the big thing here like you know when you look at kansas city they only tighten up that defense when you're inside the red zone but i just think it's just even in the red zone it's just too many weapons you saw what tampa did uh on the road uh in these playoffs they went to washington and you know people could say washington really didn't belong in this thing but they everybody can have their opinion they won the division but then going down to New Orleans and neutralizing that team after they were beaten twice by them in the regular season. And then everybody said, well, they couldn't go to Green Bay 
and play in the snow, and they had experience in that. So they shut them down. And, you know, everybody thought Green Bay was going to really do something here. You know, oh, you got to watch out for this guy. And you got, you know, uh, John De Harris and all these guys and everything. But, you know, the way I look at this stuff, it, you know, the, the, the Patriots' uh, mindset has been brought into Tampa Bay. And, you know, they know what's at stake. And now I keep hearing the Chiefs this, Chiefs that. What have the Chiefs really done in the playoffs? You know, Cleveland got ripped off, and, and I'll just say it like that, uh, to support Cleveland. And, and and Buffalo was just, you know, it kind of excited to be there in the AFC Championship. The best years are ahead. But what did, what did Kansas City do? They haven't faced a team like Tampa. And granted, you beat them in the regular season, but this is a Tampa team that hasn't lost since then. So let's be honest with ourselves. And they did get well to Tampa down the stretch. They got to play the Falcons twice, who tested them uh, one of the games. They got to play the Lions, and Tampa ran them out of the, the uh, out of out of the Ford Field. So the, the the schedule did get a lot better for Tampa down the stretch. You're correct, Mark. They haven't lost. They're a hot team right now. Uh, Wayne, they went in and they played. Uh, you know, they, they they went to Washington. They didn't play particularly well there. They won. Uh, Wayne, then they went into New Orleans, beat Drew Brees. Looks like it ended Drew Brees' career. And then last week, went into Lambeau Field, the frozen tundra, and beat Aaron Rodgers despite Tom Brady throwing three interceptions in the second half and giving the Packers every chance to get into it, Wayne. This week, I don't think, and I know you don't either, that Tom Brady can throw three interceptions in the second half and come out with a win against Kansas City. He's going to have to play error-free football, correct? Yeah, and I'll tell you, because this is the Super Bowl, you're going to have to forget about the rest of the regular season. Uh, This is a special game, unique unto itself, and I really believe that uh, you're going to have, uh, on one hand, you've got coaching advantage going to Kansas City. You've got location advantage going to Tampa. But if you're going to go by players head to head, I'd call it even. So it's really it's really going to be a unique game. We'll see what happens. Well, I tell you what, it is a special game. There's no question about it. And one of the keys for me and JJ, we both thought we we, we talked off the air, is Tampa Bay has got to stop Hill. They got to stop. They got to stop Hill. I mean, the last time he played them. He had, what, 100 uh, yards in the first quarter in receptions? He had, what, what, 13 catches for 269 and three touchdowns? And with the Buccaneers, who, you know, they're hoping that Winfield can play and and they're hoping that uh, the other starting safety can play uh, because if they can't, that's a huge problem for Tampa Bay not having their two starting safeties in the Super Bowl because when you're playing Kansas City, to me, you've got to double Tyreek Hill, and you've got to double uh, Kelsey. And then everybody else is either manned up or you've got safety help to cross. And then you're hoping that your front four can get to the quarterback. That is the only way you're going to beat Kansas City. And to me, if these safeties can't play for, for Tampa Bay, Whitehead, and, 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 and the other one that I just mentioned um, – you know, Antoine Whitfield, who, who's a rookie, who's done a fabulous job for Tampa Bay this year, uh, that is a huge mismatch for Kansas City because you you better get to Mahomes very quick with a front four or you're in trouble. Um, uh, give me another key to the game there, um, Mark. Well, I think the, the, the other key to the game is uh, just keeping the Tampa Bay defense in check from the Kansas City offense's perspective because what Mahomes has done in the playoffs against Buffalo and Cleveland, he's going to have a hell of a time trying to uh, uh, duplicate this against Tampa. Tampa's defense is really tough. That front four can come in at you. They can they can shut down that dink and doink type of passes that he likes to throw. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing. And you're going to start to see this, I think, in the first ten minutes of the game that, you know, if, if they're going to have to adjust because I think Tampa – just has a lot of weapons. You know, they they, they played two great quarterbacks in this playoff, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees. Uh, So, you know, I I always look at things like this, and what people don't understand, they might look at records, and they might see a one loss, and they put the big, high 
a mark on that. I like to see strength of schedule. I like to see the divisions. I like to see what have you done for me lately. And that's the way games are won. And I check all the boxes and they come up camp on that as far as that. As far as Kansas City, you know, it's it's it's, it's the best of what the AFC brought to the table. So be it. And, uh, you know, uh, now uh, go back and we'll see you in five years. Well, in five years from now, it'll definitely be interesting because Brady, you would think, would be retired because he'll be 48. He says he wants to play until he's 45. Well, you know, it's one season at a time for him, let's just be honest. But at $25 million a season, uh, you know, that can cause one to want to stay a little longer. Uh, Wayne, uh, you got another key for us in the Super Bowl, and I know that you're a musical guy. I'm sure you're interested also in what the halftime show will bring, or are you not interested in that? Well, you know, you know, the halftime show is a big spectacle, and it's a big part of the game. I know it uh, it really keeps you entertained during halftime, but, you know, we, we still keep talking about season uh, records, uh, season statistics, and the Super Bowl is game time football. Uh You've really it's it's going to be a singular game unto itself, and I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but you can have an insurmountable lead going into halftime and lose that game. Well, you can, and I mean, look, it's a big game. It's not any like any other game. They say when it's kicked off, all that stuff goes out the window, and 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 we'll see. But you know, usually the team that gets the big wreck. The big lead in the Super Bowl usually goes ahead and hangs on and win it, except, of course, I'm really sorry to mention this to you, uh, the Atlanta Falcons and the J.J., and I'm, I'm sorry for myself because I live here too, and, and they blew that 28-3 to lead, and guess who they blew it to, and guess who's playing in the Super Bowl for Tampa? Tom Brady. So, uh, But, you know, you mentioned the Super Bowl show last year, and, you know, to me that was kind of tasteless. Um you know, with the, I mean, I knew friends of mine that were joking that it was so tasteless, they were going to, like, throw dollar bills at the television set because it was just so tasteless. So let's hope that this year's halftime show is not that. I'll give another key. Mine is the injury to Eric Fisher for Kansas City on the defense line, on the offensive line. He's not going to play. He's out, as everyone knows. To me, can, you know, can Jason Pierre-Paul uh, get after him? There's a Giants connection in the Super Bowl. The Giants are the ones that beat Tom Brady and, and, and uh, the Patriots when they're with New England, except this time, you know, J- Jason Pierre-Paul is with Tampa Bay. But deep Kansas City defensive coordinator Steve Spagnola was with the Giants, and now he's with Kansas City, and he knows what it takes to get to beat Tom Brady, and that's to get him off his spot, get in his face, get comfortable, get the timing out, and don't give him time to get the ball downfield. So you're going to see Kansas City try to get to Tom Brady, just like Tampa Bay is going to try to get to Mahomes. And whoever does that best is definitely is definitely going to get a leg up on this game. Uh, we got about less than seven minutes. Six, actually, we have six minutes to go in the show. You're listening to ATL Prime Sports, uh, coming to you live from Atlanta. My name is Todd Quarter. Mark Mancini's in Los Angeles. Our producer, Wayne, is in Memphis. JJ's on vacation this week, and he's given me his pick, and I'll give you his pick on the air at the end of the show. We got about five and a half minutes to go. Uh, you can you always catch this show. If you don't catch it live, you can catch it on replay. We'll put it on our Twitter accounts. You can call in and listen at one three four seven two zero five nine six three one. All right, uh, now Mark, you've given away your pick. Give tell your tell the audience the final score and what is the main reason why. Tampa Bay will win to you. Well, I'm not going to put it like it was years back with San Francisco and San Diego when that was the whitewash and the Chargers, I think, had taken out the Steelers that year and basically got to the Super Bowl. But I'll I'll basically lay it out like this. I think it's 35-17, maybe 42-17 Tampa. And the reason why is I don't think Kansas City in the last few weeks has played a team this capable of coming in hot, rolling up real good, 
and uh, now you're playing them in your backyard. So now it's not even a neutral thing here. It more or less is a, a home game for Tampa. Fans will be in the stands. The city will be, uh, you know, buzzing. And, uh, you know, whether you're flying in, like I said earlier, you know, the middle of the week, the end of the week, whatever, no advantage. You're still going to get the jet lag. You're still going in another time zone. I just think this is a whitewash. And I'm going to tell you right now that this is not going to be a game. I think Tampa takes it to them. Wow. And, and Kansas City is the three-point favorite, and you're not worried about that at all. You've got the Bucks in a blowout. There will be fans in the stands, like you mentioned, 22,000 to be exact, or is it? No, it's 25 now. Between 22 and 25, I, I keep hearing different numbers. There will be approximately 6,700 healthcare workers who will be vaccinated, who will get in the game for free, which I think is an absolute tremendous thing that the National Football League is doing. I, I am so happy. I would love to go to a Super Bowl. I've never been to one, even though one was only 30 miles from my house. Less than that, actually, in the Pontiac Silverdome when I was a kid, the San Francisco um, uh, Cincinnati Bengals Super Bowl when Ken Anderson was quarterback in the Bengals and, and, um, and Joe Montana was quarterback in the 49ers. So, and Reggie Williams, who actually went to my old high school, Flint Southwestern, starred at linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals. So, interesting. I knew his mom. She worked at the high school. And, uh, you know, that was a big thing uh, for, for Flint, Michigan at the time, to have one of their natives playing the Super Bowl less than 30 miles down the road in Pontiac. All right, Wayne, I, um, give me your – we got about less than three minutes left. Tell me uh, who wins and why your biggest reason. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and say that Tampa's going to win, and I predict the score to be 28-17. to 17. And I'll even go one much farther and say that uh, Kansas City's best quarter will be the third quarter, but it's still not going to result in a win. I've got Tampa Bay winning uh, just because I feel like at this moment they're the better team. Now, you just said Tampa Bay's third uh, uh, Kansas City's third quarter will be the, be the best quarter. Why? Uh, because I feel like the first two quarters, it's just going to be back and forth, uh, and they're going to come out of halftime with a different plan, and Tampa Bay's going to adjust to it during the third quarter, but the fourth quarter, they're just going to shut them down. You know, that's interesting. You and Mark only have Kansas City scoring 17 points in the game. As we have less than two minutes in the show, I'm stunned by that. J.J. has given me his pick, 31 to 30. Um, his key to the game, obviously, is the Chiefs O-line versus the D-line of the Bucks. And let's see, he sent me another note that a last-second suck-up field goal, Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul get to Holmes and cause a strip sack that changes the game. And you know what? I like the detail. I, I like what he said. But my take is I'm going, and, J.J., you're right. I don't know if you're listening or not. I'm going with, so as, as, um, as uh, the head coach Andy Reid would say, oh, <laughs> And I usually never, ever bet against my man Tom Brady. But I've got Kansas City winning this puppy. 30, uh, uh, sorry, 41 to 37, Kansas City winning it. And I have it, Patrick Mahomes takes him down for the game winner and hits Tyreek Hill in the end zone. No, no, take that back. Hits Kelsey in the end zone to win it. And there's the difference. And my key to the game is, I mentioned earlier, my biggest key, Steve Spagnuolo was the D.C. for the Giants when they played Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl and upset them when the, the uh, excuse me, the Patriots, when the Patriots were going for their perfect season. We're going to leave it there. We're out of time. I'm Todd Gordon, Atlanta, Mark Mancini, Los Angeles, Wayne, our producer in Memphis, J.J.'s off. He'll be back um, next week on the other side of the ATL. You guys enjoy the Super Bowl. Good afternoon, and have a great weekend and enjoy the day. Good afternoon, everybody.